Good morning, good and kind people. Lisa Gale here. And today we have a special treat for a special group of kids. Hold on to your cookie sheets and let's get baking. Hi hey everybody, we're back. I've already been baking and I want to show you what I've already done. I'm well on my way. Here's what I already have made and they are just delicious. I've already tried one with a cup of coffee. I finished that one batch and I'm gonna start with the second batch. These were so good. I'm gonna keep everything just the same. What I'm gonna start out with is two and a half cups of butter. This butter has been brought to room temperature. I also added two cups of brown sugar, a cup of white sugar, and two teaspoons of vanilla extract. I wanna show you my vanilla extract. I actually use a vanilla bean paste, which I buy at the Amish store. You, a lot of people make their own and that's great. This is what I like to use. Adds a lot of good flavor to your cookies, whatever you're making. After you add your butters and your sugars, you're gonna cream those together. Then we're gonna add in slowly our dry ingredients. Our dry ingredients for these cookies are four cups flour. You can also um, use self-rising, just leave out the baking soda and salt if you decide to use self-rising. I just keep all-purpose. So to the four cups of all-purpose flour, I add one teaspoon of baking soda a half a teaspoon of salt because I use salted butter. If you're using unsalted butter, increase that to one teaspoon. And then we're gonna add two cups of chocolate chips and I'm adding really big chocolate chips. They make the chocolate go a long way. So we're gonna start with creaming our butters and sugars and then we're gonna add to that two eggs and two egg yolks. two whole eggs. I just crack it on a flat surface. Some people do it on the side of your bowl. And this is how you separate the egg yolks. This is the way I do it. I give it a good smack, just like I do if I'm gonna break the egg. I pull the shell in half, get rid of the egg white. I just flip that back and forth till the egg white is gone. I only want the yolk for these last two. So once I get rid of that egg white, I plop it in. Some people have a egg separator that separates the whites from the yolks. This is the way I've always done it. And now we're going to slowly beat the eggs and eggs yolks into our creamed mixture. It's nice and creamed. Give this a quick stir with my whisk, which I'm going to do now. Get those dry ingredients all kind of mixed together a little better. Then I'm gonna pour part of it in there. And I don't wanna over mix it, so I'm just gonna give it a quick little mix with the mixer and do the rest by hand. All right, that's gonna do it. The rest we're gonna do by hand. And by hand, I mean I'm using a spatula. Though I'm not opposed to sticking your hands right down in there and mixing it up. Even if it's cookie dough, you don't want to overbeat the mixture once you add flour ingredients to the wetter ingredients. And that's a pretty stiff batter, but that's okay because that means your cookies are really going to stand up well in the baking process. All right. And before I get too much further, since I'm almost done with that, I'm going to add the two cups of chocolate chips, which comes out to be a regular size pack of chocolate chips. Now, of course, you could add different things to this. You could add nuts if you wanted to, more chips, less chips. I think since I doubled this recipe, because I'm going to make a lot of them, you want to cut that recipe in half when you're making just a few. And that's about good with the cookie dough. It kind of looks like one big ball of cookie, and that's okay. As you can see in the back, you see my cookie sheets already ready. So I'm just gonna pull those down. I want the spatula, but I think I'm done with that. 
and I am thinking since I used these for the earlier batch, I'm going to trade out for some new parchment paper since these went through a few rounds. And special thanks to Lisa Dietrich, Chase's mom, for letting me borrow her mother's cookie sheet. The was a luncheon lady, cafeteria lady for years, that was her career and I knew she would have some awesome cookie sheets, so she brought them to me yesterday and I'm able to use them and I'm so happy to have them here. So we're gonna get our parchment paper and I'm gonna tell you all a secret about parchment paper. You can buy it at a bake shop, even Walmart, but the very best place here for me to buy parchment paper is Dollar Tree. And you can buy the exact same parchment paper that you get at expensive stores for a buck. Having said that, I'm going to finish lining these sheets and we'll be right back with you. Now, I'm just going to take a tablespoon, just a regular serving tablespoon you get in your drawer. I'm going to scoop a tablespoon out and this is where I use my hands. Roll it a little bit, place it on the cookie sheet. And I like to feel it with my hands, because then if I have to adjust what I think is too much or too little dough, I can just pinch it off. I get a feel in my hand for what it's like. I had a friend asked me once, how do you get your cookies so uniform? The secret is you start, put it in my hand, I feel it. And I'm just gonna continue making the balls of taco chip dough and putting it on the pan. For me, each of these pans fits 15 cookies. And I'm gonna continue doing this. I'll meet you back here in 11 and a half minutes, which is what I have figured out the correct baking time for my oven is. I'll meet you back here and we'll see what they look like when they come out. So we're back and those cookies are almost ready to come out of the oven. They smell heavenly. And while I was waiting on the first batch, I was able to get all of the pans ready to go in the oven. Which if you really are working in a cafeteria or a lunchroom, having all the multiple pans and being able to get through that work quickly, obviously it's gonna facilitate being able to feed a large crowd. And there is our timer. So we're gonna take our cookies out now and see how they turned out. Ta-da, and they're perfect. So I'm gonna let those set over on the brown paper bag untrayed for a couple minutes until they cool down and put the next one in. Set the timer for 11 and a half minutes and keep going. We'll see you at the end. I just wanna quickly show you what the cookies all look like completely baked. Really? Here we go. Hopefully you can see them. I know the lighting's a little off. It's 130 chocolate chip cookies. That's all for now. Y'all have a good day.